The Lord be with you. And also with you. I have a couple of announcements. Uh, this is this week and at Tuesday, actually Tuesday night at the board meeting, which is at 630, is our last. That's when we're going to close the books on our donations for Champions Kids Camp this year. And so I can't give you a number right now because I don't know, but uh, we've still got some uh, sponsorships coming in. So we'll do what we do there and we'll at the board meeting, we'll finish that up. And then we'll also have a number and so we can report that next week. Um, a couple of reports. Uh, we have a good report on Brother McKinney up here. He's doing better. Yeah. We're happy about that. Um, our worship leader on Saturday night, Chris Proctor, uh, as you all remember, had heart surgery and a lot of other things that happened. Uh, you probably saw in the news last week that there was a church camp from Clear Lake that uh, uh, a lot of people got the virus. And uh, Chris and Chrislyn had sent their daughter to the camp. And so everybody at their house has COVID. It's not, Chris isn't having significant issues from it except he can't taste. Chrislyn's really sick and I don't know about the little guy. But the physical therapist won't come. And the nurses won't come. And so all of his rehab from his nursing stuff, I mean his heart surgery is put on hold for, who knows, 21 days or so. So, uh, but he's doing okay. But uh, he said tell everybody hi, but he certainly would also appreciate prayers. And I think we can be willing to do that for him. The other thing is, uh, you remember that in a message a couple weeks ago, and then I think last week we talked a little bit about Candace, who was the young lady that was at uh, what used to be Bayshore. I have to say it that way, because if I say Southeast, y'all don't know what that is. You think it's Southeast Memorial. It's no longer Bayshore. They informed me of that when I tried to use my preacher's badge. They said, yeah, it doesn't work here. This isn't Bayshore. And I'm done looking around. You know. uh, anyway, uh, she's out of the hospital. Wow. And... Uh, so, uh, Kelly, raise your hand, Kelly. Kelly's been instrumental in our connection there, and she works with Kelly out at Houston Women's ACA Hospital. And uh, so Kelly got us a card for us to send to her, and it's back there on the tables in the back. And I would just love it to be so crowded with signatures that she can't even pick one out from the other. And uh, so when church is over today, Kelly will take that and we'll make sure she gets it uh, to let her know we've been praying for her. Uh, you know, it's like the, the reality is we did our part. We prayed and she's better and now it's up to her. And uh, so we pray for her to have the spirit and the willingness and the fortitude and all those things that go along with that to continue to improve. Um, let me see if there's anything else. I think everything else is going pretty much normal. Oh, yeah, well, let me report to you that people occasionally ask me, well, how's the church doing? Well, as you remember last year, our insurance went up a bunch. Uh, a bunch. I don't remember how. It, it went up $10,000. It was a bunch. And of course, we didn't have that in the budget, but you got to have insurance. And so we started having to. Well, as of Friday, we have paid our last installment on this year's insurance. And we're still at 100% of where we're supposed to be on paying our apportionment. So uh, we're doing okay. And uh, we appreciate your faithfulness, and it's only because of y'all that we're able to do that stuff. Uh, we continue to do uh, work around the building. Uh, we've got this room pretty nice, but we're cleaning up some others. We've got junk to haul away and stuff to do. And so uh, we're getting near the end of an opportunity. If you want one of those pink pews or chairs, you need to give us a shout because before long, they're going to yeah. go somewhere else. Uh, and so uh, they're here and they're available to you. Other than that, uh, I think we're, we're doing well. I continue to, I was assigned last week for uh, five more weeks of physical therapy. And I get to see the doctor on Wednesday. I'm hoping he'll let me start doing stuff again, like, you know, vacuuming and washing the dishes and uh, doing all those. <laughs> it, it was easier to get out of stuff when you had the sling. You know, now I don't look like I'm, you know, everybody grabs me on the shoulder and they shake hands. So you just got to get better or get over it. That's one or the other. But uh, anyway, and if you'll play something to warm up. Oh, one more thing. Next week. Uh, oh, did anybody have a joke? Remember I asked you to bring a joke? Last week, anybody have a joke? Uh, well, uh, 
I'll share one from last night if you didn't watch it on the video. I, I can't remember any of them from last night. Uh, the only one I know is for sure is that if you'll take your age, whatever it is, and add five to it, that's how old you'll be in five years. <laughs> That's profound, isn't it? <laughs> you see how fun it is to laugh? We need to be doing more of that. And I'll talk more about why in a little while. Anyway, Anne, if you'll play something to warm my hearts, it's for the first. I got so busy telling my joke, I forgot the rest. Next week is Hawaiian Shirt Week. That applies to any and everybody, anything closest you got to a Hawaiian shirt. And we're gonna have a contest to see who has the most Hawaiian of the Hawaiian shirts. So uh, if you have something like that, or if you don't, this is a good chance. You got a whole week to go out and shop for Hawaiian shirts. But uh, anyway, we're gonna we're gonna have fun next week too. So now we are ready to get started. If you'll stand, we're gonna sing together. King Herod heard of it, for Jesus' name had become known. Some were saying John the baptizer had been raised from the dead, and for this reason these powers are at work in him. But others said, it's Elijah. 
And others said, it's a prophet, like one of the prophets of old. But when Herod heard of it, he said, John, whom I beheaded, has been raised. For Herod himself had sent men who arrested John, bound him, and put him in prison on account of Herodias, his brother Philip's wife, because Herod had married her. For John had been telling Herod, it's not lawful for you to have your brother's wife. And Herodias had a grudge against him and wanted to kill him. But she could not, for Herod feared John, knowing that he was a righteous and holy man, and he protected him. When he heard him, he was greatly perplexed, and yet he liked to listen to him. But an opportunity came when Herod, on his birthday, gave a banquet for his courtiers and officers and for the leaders of Galilee. When his daughter Herodias came in and danced, she pleased Herod and his guests, and the king said to the girl, Ask me for whatever you wish, and I will give it to you. And he solemnly swore to her, Whatever you ask me, I will give you even half my kingdom. She went out and said to her mother, What should I ask for? She replied, The head of John the baptizer. Immediately she rushed back to the king and requested, I want you to give me at once the head of John the Baptist on a platter. The king was deeply grieved. Yet out of regard for his oaths and for the guests, he did not want to refuse her. Immediately the king sent a soldier of the guard with others to bring John's head. He went and beheaded him in prison brought his head on a platter, and gave it to the girl. Then the girl gave it to her mother. When the disciples heard about it, they came and took his body and laid it in a tomb. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. This morning, let's affirm our faith with the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead, he ascended into heaven, and sat at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting.
as we gather together to pray together this morning, I think my first thoughts go to those people in Florida that are dealing with a big tall building that just fell down and so many people still not recovered. Can't imagine what it would be like to be looking for your child or your grandmother for a place like that. Uh, also, just for the apparently random acts of violence that are going on around. A uh, couple sitting at the aquarium <laughs> just being there. And a guy gets up and walks over and I don't know that the woman died, but the man died. And then the teenager that was on the way home from an Astros game and got randomly shot on the highway. Uh, you know, there certainly is cause to live in fear, apparently. And so with all of these things going on in the world, I think we need to turn to our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Let's pray. Gracious God, here in our area, we're kind of used to hurricanes. We're used to heavy rains and flooding, but we don't really want to become accustomed to being people that are fearful just to get on the road and go across town. We don't want to become so callous that we don't pay attention and realize that these are family members, someone's brother, sister, daughter. We look at the terrible situation going on in Florida and we just can't even imagine what that would be like here. And you promised us that the world was in a mess and would continue to be a mess. Nation would turn against nation. People would war. There would be violence. You promised all of that would be true. You also promised us that you'd be with us always. In the midst of our trials, our tribulations, our pains, our sufferings, our illnesses, you are still our God. And so today as a community, we turn to you. If there's something we can do, if there's an action we can take, a prayer we can say, Anything we can do, God, we submit ourselves to You to be part of the solution for bringing Your kingdom. Just like we prayed a few minutes ago, or we will pray in just a few minutes in the Lord's Prayer that Your kingdom would come on earth that it does as it is in heaven. We pray for that peace. We read Scripture versions that tell us about Herod's meanness, and we see plenty of that going on nowadays too. But let us not forget the end of the story. We come here today to hear the good news. The good news that Christ is our Savior and our King. He's the great physician. He can heal us and He can heal the hearts of those that are hurting. He can change people that we don't believe can be changed. Jesus fought some of the same fights when He walked on, these, on this earth. And yet He still prayed to you as we pray now. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be Thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses. We forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Friends, you can remain seated now as A.J. leads us in Lord of the Dance.
Ephesians. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in Christ with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places, just as he chose us in Christ before the foundation of the world to be holy and blameless before him in love. He destined us for adoption as his children through Jesus Christ, according to the good pleasure of his will to the praise of his glorious grace that he freely bestowed on us in the beloved. In him we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of our trespasses according to the riches of all his grace that he lavished on us. With all wisdom and insight he has made known to us the mystery of his will according to his good pleasure that he set forth in Christ as a plan for the fullness of time to gather up all things in him, things in heaven and things on earth. In Christ we have also obtained an inheritance, having been destined according to the purpose of him who accomplishes all things according to his counsel and will, so that we, who were the first to set our hope on Christ, might live for the praise of his glory. In him you also, when you had heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, and had believed in him, were marked with the seal of the promised Holy Spirit. This is the pledge of our inheritance toward redemption as God's own people to the praise of his glory. And this is the word of our Lord. Thanks be to God. So I, I have to tell you, I made a, a boo-boo last week. It's the, the fish story that I was telling doesn't come from uh, the Pikes Peak fish market. It's the Pikes Place fish market, in case you're trying to look that up. There's a difference in Pikes Place. It's Pikes Place fish market. Uh, you know, this, this scripture from Ephesians, it should be one of the most comforting scriptures we would ever read in all the scripture. What we've just been told right here is everything you ever need to know. You've received the gift of the Holy Spirit. You've been saved. You've been promised eternity. And you've been picked for the team. That's pretty cool news, isn't it? We're on the team. Now, what we're going to do with the team begins with you. And one of the reasons I was so enamored with this, uh, this notion of the fish market was that it gave me some insight into the things that I've experienced in my life, especially around the church. The question I would ask you today is if you know right now that this scripture tells you you've got everything you need, you've got salvation, you've got God's mercy and grace, you've got it all, that's who you are, I want to know who you're being. Do you see the difference? Are you being those things? Are you being the light of the world when you go out into the world? Are you being the Christian that you've been taught to be? 
Many, many years ago, when I was first got into recovery, there was a guy named John Bradshaw. He did a lot of, of stuff. You can find him still, I'm sure, on, on the internet somewhere. But uh, one of the things he said about people was that he believed that every person had a destiny, a God-given talent or blessing. But his fear was that most people would go to their grave with their music unplayed. And so if the music comes from God, and this is the recipe in this scripture, all of those things, adoption, inheritance, then who are we? How are we being? Are we human doings? Or are we human beings? There's a, talk, a lot of talk now about church and what's going to happen to church post-pandemic because it's not the same as it was. Although I think, I, I, I think I counted right a while ago, this is the largest group we've had here at one time except for Easter since the pandemic began. I think that's, so we're, we're, we're making progress. But church is, is going to have to be different because we've got, you know, there's all, it looks like there's going to be new variants and things are happening and there's some things we'll probably never do again and other things we can do. But we're not going to quit being the church because we've got an inheritance. We've been given the duty to go out and be the kingdom of God for the people in this community and around the world, regardless of the pain and suffering. Amen. Regardless of the situation. God didn't say go find the perfect community and do it there, although for years that's what we church people did. We found a brand new community. We built a house in the midst of the brand new community and we got all the brand new people. It's like picking easy fruit off the tree. But now it's time for the hard work. Because it doesn't matter where your church is located, the mission field surrounds it. And right now the kingdom of God is desperately needed out in the world. That really seems worth an amen. Amen. I mean, I don't care whether you're talking about, it doesn't matter, anything. You can talk about the price of lumber. You can talk about unemployment. You can talk about people that can't get work. You can talk about restaurants that can't open because they can't get people to go to work. You can talk about people that used to work in the restaurant business and they got laid off because of the pandemic and now they got real jobs where they don't have to work serving people anymore because there's other good jobs out there. It, the world is in a mess. Amen. The kingdom is not in a mess. Amen. And so why don't we spend more time looking there and less time looking out here? Yep. Because I believe when we do, we can start to, to understand these things can happen. They can change. The world can be changed. And once again, friends, i got to tell you, it starts with each of us. That's the hard part. You know, as long as I've been doing this, 20 years, I've heard people say, well, you know, I can't do the things I used to do. Yeah, me neither. <laughs> but I can do something. Yep. You know, and, and so what can you do for the kingdom? Well, you can do something. What the fish people talked about at the Pikes Place fish market was they had a humdrum job. I would equate it to, can you imagine what a fascinating and interesting day would be to be a checker at Kroger or H-E-B? <laughs> Wouldn't you think that'd just be one of the most exciting jobs you could ever have? No. <laughs> just send one thing after the other across the scanner. <clears throat> and when I say it starts with you, you know, all of us see those people, right? We all go somewhere where they got a checker. And we realize they're having a humdrum not very exciting day, why don't we make it better for them? Instead of, what happens to me is I'll get behind some sweet little old lady that's got 900 coupons <laughs> and the checker missed one and she just tears her up. She's a sweet little old lady, but the poor checker takes it right on the chin. And you know, what can they say? Yes, ma'am. And I love getting up there to be the next one in line. I said, I hope you're having a great day. <laughs> That's what I'm talking about when I say we can change the world one day at a time, one person at a time. It is up to us to go out into the world like that because we're people of God's kingdom. Yep. They ain't going to get us down. We just sang about it. You know, Jesus says it's hard to dance with the devil on your back. Well, get the devil off your back. The devil has no power over us. Amen. 
The devil's power was defeated. Jesus got up from the grave, people. We're people of joy and happiness. Now let me tell you, just because you get to pick your own attitude, it does not necessarily mean that your own attitude is going to feel great. I, you can't always be happy. Really. Jesus never promised happiness. He promised eternity. Maybe sometimes our expectations for happiness are a little far out. We may not ever own the biggest boat or the newest Harley or the fanciest, I don't know, whatever it is, truck. It must be a Ford. But. <laughs> hey, I used to work for Ford Motor Company. You know, give me a break. Six years of my life I spent there, but... You know, it, it may not be that. That may not be the kind of happiness God's talking about. Jesus says, remember what he says? He says, my peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you. I do not give to you as the world does. What are our expectations? And that really is some of the problem. So I want to tell you, I, I think it is up to us. We, we take this scripture and we say we've been, we've been given the inheritance of Jesus Christ's ministry and we have the opportunity to be people that can go out into the world and spread the word. And I got to tell you, it really does matter what we say. We had a secretary one time at the church. Church secretaries never say anything bad about the preacher because that's their boss, right? Sometimes they disagree. This was not at this church, so it's nobody that you know. I promise you, it's nobody that you know. It's not anybody that you can even imagine right now. But this, this person, somebody would go in and they would be mad at something the preacher did or said. And of course they can't say anything, but they would roll their eyes. <laughs> what you say or don't say makes a difference. And sometimes we can, especially us guys, I don't know about you gals because I don't get to get in those all-gal groups, but us guys, we can get into a place where the first liar doesn't have a chance. And, and we, we just tell stories about it was the worst day of our life and my worst day was worse than your worst day and pretty soon we're all having a worst day. And, and, and we have a choice about whether most of us can look at those things that happened in the past and laugh now. And if we can do that, then it's fine. But boy, when you can get all wound up about something that happened 10 years ago and is still affecting you today, then you need to think about who you're being. Because what's gone has gone. Yesterday's over. And today's the only day we get to live. So what are we going to do with it, given this opportunity to, to be ministers of the kingdom, to pick our attitude, to do it with some good-spirited thought, and to realize that no matter what's going on, whether we're having, and let me tell you, I had a bad day Friday, but when you have a bad day, it can be a horrible day. It can keep getting worse for a while. But if you keep the right attitude, I promise you, at some point it gets better. But you got to keep the attitude. If you become a defeatist or you throw up your hands or you give up, you can go home with a bad day. You only got one today. Don't end it being a bad day. You know, somebody wrote a book about it, right? Don't sweat the small stuff. It's all small stuff. Yeah. I, I think I told this, I don't know if I told it here on Saturday night, but George, uh, Charles Allen was a pastor at First Methodist Church for 28 years. My mom and dad were good friends of his. Dad had brought him down here for a revival way back at Foster Place Methodist Church. I guess when I was four or five years old, years ago, they knew him well. But he stood up in the pulpit when we first got there and he said, I just want to tell you how it works. I'm going to see if I can find my Georgian accent. He said, my wife and I made a bargain. She would make all of the minor decisions and I would make all the major ones. And after 28 years, we've never had a major decision to be made. <laughs> I mean, really. The major decisions people need to make in their life are to turn their life over to the will and pleasure of Christ. The other stuff is just small stuff. Yep. Now, all of these things I've been talking to you about from fish, and I'm not done talking about it. It's going to go on for a while, but not today. 
I believe when you make the right choices, it affects other people. Y'all believe that? Yeah. Amen. Yeah, do you know those people that you see them and you just can't wait to see them again? And then there's those people you see them and you wish you didn't have to see them again? Yeah. <laughs> None of y'all. Today. So the choices we make about our attitude, the words we use, the focus we put in our lives impact other people, even sometimes when we don't know it. That's kind of what I'm talking about for that poor checker that's working at H-E-B or Kroger. I don't think they have any left at Walmart. <laughs> We have an option. What if, what if we started off every day, every single day, realize that this is the only day we've got. This is the day we've got to work for the kingdom. We get to pick our attitude. We need to, to work us on the way and the way we present ourselves and what we say. And at the end of the day, we need to focus on making somebody else's day. Last night while we were here in church, we made somebody's day. The pantry box was full. People came and got groceries. That's what I'm talking about, making somebody's day. Just a little short story about that. There was a lady and a family that lived in a house. They were medium income. They had what they needed. They had some neighbors that were less, less well off than them. And this little boy notices that his mom is getting a little bowl and going next door to the people's house and asking them for some salt. And she said, he says, Mom, we have salt. Why are you going to get some? And she said, well, you know, the neighbors come over here and ask us for stuff a lot. You know, they need some flour, or some sugar, borrow a wrench. They're just not as well off as we are. But they're still important. And I want them to know just how important they are so I know they have salt. And so I'm just going to go over and see if I can borrow a little salt so that they can feel like they have value. Hmm. That's what I'm talking about. When I, it doesn't have to be some grand gesture. You, yeah, just let's make somebody else's day. And if we can do that, I really believe when the word gets out that, that here at Hope we're having fun, maybe telling jokes, you know, five years added to your age is five years older than you are. <laughs> there was another one, if I could remember, I'll tell you, I just can't remember. And uh, if we could be good spirited, if we can make somebody else's day, I don't know that our attendance will ever go up, but our hearts will be full. And we'll be living into the work of the kingdom. And that's what I want to do. How about you? Yep. When I can have that opportunity to make somebody else, to light somebody else up, to make somebody else's day, I think that's the best gift God gives me in this kingdom. To go out and do that kind of work. I think we all have a chance to do that. Be sure and sign that card in the back as we send that. Can you imagine this young lady? I don't know that she ever goes to church or ever has. But there's a church not too far from wherever she is that cared enough not only to pray for her without her knowing them, but now to send her a card. Those little gestures. I told you before when I went to Kairos, the in-prison experience of Emmaus, we gave birthday cakes to the inmates. They, some of those inmates had never had a birthday cake. We made their day. And when you can do that, you know what? They become more receptive to hearing who else you are, who you're really being, what the Word of God really means. Wesley said a long time ago, you can't talk to people about God when they're hungry. You've got to feed them. I guess that's why we Methodists eat so much. <laughs> But, but I think the reality is we have a chance. I really believe this is the coolest thing ever that we can go out and learn a way of living so that this becomes something we don't have to get up and focus on. It's who we are and what we do. So as I end this today, it all does begin with you. The question I have is who are you being? Who are you being in the kingdom today? Let's pray. Gracious God, I thank you so much for the opportunity you give us to be together. 
to live in a place where we can freely travel, to be in a place where it's cool and comfortable, to have good friends. But God, we know that these gifts you gave us, you gave it to us to use, not just to enjoy. So strengthen us. Remind us that we have the choice today, that our choice infects and attracts others, that our words matter, that we have the chance right now to begin to lead by example. I pray all this in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. So our closing song today is We Are the Church. Uh, so we, you know, we're not passing an offering plate yet. The basket's in the back. We're glad to accept your gifts, tithes, and offerings there. There is a bucket back there. If you have some fair change you want to put towards sponsoring a kid to Bill Nash. If you're able and willing, let's stand now as we sing together. It's been a joy to be with you today. God's peace be with you as you go from this place. Today, focus, figure out, who are you being when you've been given all of these gifts as we read about so that you can be the ones that are worthy to receive the inheritance of the eternity given to us by Jesus Christ. Go in peace. Amen. Amen.